Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. And we're going to answer an email today. Uh, and by the way, Bob Ulrich is in studio. And Bob, this is a rather typical email because we've been talking about the rapture lately and a lot of people uh, have some very uh, uh, passionately held ideas about the rapture. Well, there's no doubt about that, and they're always willing to share them, you know, quite uh, quite angrily and steamily. Uh, we certainly get some interesting comments, and, yeah, and we, we just do. look at them, and we can't quite figure out where the confusion lies. But you went on talking about the rapture here on the update here just a few days ago uh, and talked about how some people may not qualify for the rapture. Now, we're not talking about the unsaved. We're talking about Christians who are not going in the rapture. And this opened up a can of worms, and boy, we had some, some really interesting comments here. And um, I think it's a good opportunity for you to defend some of the things that you said. Uh, and based on some of the comments in here, I think it'll be clear what you're defending. Uh, this email came from a lady by the name of Linda. And Linda says, Hi, Gary. I often watch your show. I'm always pleased. But today, I was listening to you talk about the rapture and whether or not all Christians will go into the rapture. No. Not all who profess to be Christian will be in the rapture. The Bible absolutely tells us this in the parable of the ten virgins, where only one went because only that one was prepared. And in the verses where Jesus says, two will be in the field, one will be taken, and another left behind. Two will be grinding, one will be taken, another left behind. Also, Jesus says to us, count thyself worthy that you may escape that which is coming upon the earth. So you see, Gary, it is the great escape. The Bible is very clear on this. If all Christians were going in the rapture, sir, then how is it that John describes those who came out of the great tribulation who died for Christ and were beheaded? There are a lot of Christians who thought they were Christians, but only in name. Like Jesus tells us, you'll know a tree by its fruit. Do you believe a Christian out on a drinking binge at a local disco is going to disappear when it clearly states no drunkard may enter the kingdom of God? You've given false hope to those who profess to be Christian only. Perfect example, Barack Obama professes to be a Christian, but he favors Islam and abortion, and he forbade Franklin Graham from attending the prayer meeting. He believes in division, favors ungodly principles. Sir, please, I know you have to know your Bible, so how can you come and tell us something that lies in complete contrast to what the Word says? Even Jesus said to some of those Christians who will be left behind after they came to him and said, we did, didn't we cast out demons in your name, and we did this, and we did that? What does Jesus say to them? Get away from me. I'll vomit you out of my mouth. I never knew you. No, no, no. The Bible says it plainly. Not all who profess to be Christian are really Christian. And many have turned from the faith, especially in these last days, which means they have lost their immortal soul by succumbing to seducing spirits. So there you have it. Not everyone who calls themselves a Christian is going to be taken in the rapture. So well, where, where does the truth lie? Bob to Linda L. And by the way, I want to say thanks for, for that email, even though it is a, a scathing criticism. We welcome all of your emails, and, uh, and we are very serious about teaching what we teach. Uh, Bob, I want to read, begin by, by reading uh, just a verse out of the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 4.16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, this is a very clear statement. It talks about an event that has never happened, but is going to happen at some point in the future. Only God the Father knows. And it, it contains this little phrase, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So, Bob, who are the dead in Christ? Those are the, the saints down throughout history who've died, their soul has gone home to be with the Lord, their bodies are still on the ground, they're the saved of all generations. Now, how do you decide who's a saint? Someone who has a personal belief, is trusting Jesus Christ as the only way to salvation and eternal life. In other words, they have relied on uh, the finished work of Christ by grace, through faith, they believe and, and they are going to rise in the general resurrection of the church. They're called the dead in Christ. The next sentence is this in verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, that is, with the dead in Christ, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So 
we have here a, an event that takes place in an instant, a, let's say a millisecond, in which those who are safe in Christ from Pentecost until that day are instantly resurrected. And also, we, which are alive and remain, will join in that instant resurrection. So I don't like to refer to the, to the rapture as the great escape. It is the general resurrection of the church. And God has chosen to raise his entire church, the body of Christ, all in one moment. What a grand moment that's going to be. And who is to decide who goes or who is resurrected at that moment? Not us, that's for sure. I don't decide. Gary, this is Christian class warfare right here we've got going on. Yeah. I cannot look at, 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 at an individual and point the bony finger and say, you are not going to go in the rapture. I would never do so. But human emotion enters this picture, doesn't it? It and, does And indeed. people look at each other and compare themselves to each other. And, well, they go to church on Sunday night. Well, I go on Wednesday night, too. Uh, and there are many, many other areas in Christianity I won't get into that are gray areas for a lot of people. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a passage in 1 Corinthians 3 I want to read. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 3.10. It says, According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man builds upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Like J.R.'s old pastor, Tom Eliff, used to say, some people was going to get into heaven, and there's going to be smoke on the bottom of their shoes. Oh, yeah. Just barely saved, but they made it. And it's not for me to decide who that's going to be. It's for me to present the gospel uh, of, of the living God and, and the gospel of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that being the only means of salvation. And as far as the personal transaction that takes place between any human being and his Lord, that is not for me to judge. One more thing. John says in 1 John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So John says it. You're going to be victorious over this world if you simply profess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work. Uh, to me, that's the cutoff point. Gary, that word overcomer is being bandied about in different Christian circles today. That's a Greek word, isn't it? It is, and it's, it comes from the Greek word nike, which means victory or to be victorious. The one victorious over the world is the one who's going to be resurrected on that great resurrection day spoken of in 1 Thessalonians 4.16 and 4.17. Is that where the word nike came from? That's where the, the word nike company? came from. The shoe company borrowed that word. Meaning that if you wear Nikes, you're going to be victorious in the race. How about that? You're going to be an overcomer if you're victorious. <laughs> How do you get that victory, Gary? You get that victory <laughs> through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you plead his blood. Lord, I know that your shed blood is sufficient for my salvation. I accept your finished work by faith, and I look for you to raise me at Resurrection Day. And I know you will because I have placed my faith fully in you. And if you, if you believe that, hey, you're going to go on Resurrection Day. Now, Gary, I know you're not condoning sin in a Christian's oh, life. No. I know you're not condoning carnal Christianity. So many of the comments seem to make it seem like you were painting a picture that, uh, you know, Christians, we're in the age of grace. You can do what you want. And I know you don't believe that. Absolutely don't believe that. Uh, I would be among the first to, to admonish a carnal Christian. And as a pastor... I have found myself in a position to have to do just that on occasion. But, Bob, anyone who has been uh, a, a member of my particular local assembly for a number of years knows that I would never condone carnal Christianity. Gary, we believe in the rapture, and we believe that everyone that claims the name of Christ is going in the rapture. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's called Resurrection Day. And I just would say at this moment, as we always say... 
He's coming soon, so keep looking up.